So questions from the homework, any of these you want me to go over, now is your chance to ask. Yes? Okay, so no, I'm hoping, pull, clicky pen, thank you. I'm hoping number two, where you have the triangle, started to get pretty boring. That's my almost my goal. It, you feel like, geez, Mr. Duick, it's opposite, it's adjacent, it's a five, and walk through it. The word problems are the tricky ones. So sorry, here, which one? Three what? Three B. On a sunny day, the sun's rays strike the ground at an angle of 53 degrees. A tree. There's my tree. It's as good as art as you'll ever see with me. 50, uh, sorry, 18 meters in height. So I think this right here is 18, yes? Casts a shadow. There's its shadow. Here's the sun's rays. It says strikes the ground at an angle of 53 degrees, so I'm pretty sure it's that. I know not to put it up here because it did say strike the ground. I'm clever enough. And I know this one's 90, so that's not 53 degrees. Okay. Here's the question, Kiera. If you're measuring the length of a shadow, how do you measure the length of a shadow? And I think the answer is, kiddo, you measure it on the ground. That's x. Did you get that far so far? Okay. Does that make sense? I, I tried to explain to you how my brain approaches it. I mean, I'm hoping you can all draw the tree. Maybe not, but hopefully. And then when it says height, I hope you clue in height. That's a vertical. Then it's more interpretive. Oh, no, with the ground, better put the angle down there. Uh, by the way, then, if that's my angle, opposite adjacent or hypotenuse. How about here? Which trig function? Yeah. What always goes next to the trig function? And don't say the degrees, because that's never what I said. What always goes next? The angle, because sometimes it's a variable, but this time we know it. 53 equals what over what? 18 over x. The x is on the bottom. When you cross multiply, you'll then have to divide on your next step as well. Is that OK, though? Yeah. Any others? D, E, F, and J went OK? We talked about angle of elevation and angle of depression. And I told you that I actually remember it that way, depression. And why do I remember that way, Tanner? Because when I say depression, automatically my eyes lower. And, oh, yeah, it's this angle, right? It's a dumb way to remember, but it works for me, right? OK, can then later on today, if you'd be so kind as to hand that in, we'll move on to today's lesson, fairly short. So lesson four. Cole, my friend, can you read to me the title? What this really means is now I can ask you to find anything, given anything. Sides, angles, and I say find every missing thing of a triangle. That's what we mean by solving a triangle. You need two pieces of information. You either need two sides, and then you can use Pythagoras to find the third side, and you can use the shift button, shift coast, shift tan, shift sign to find the angle, or you need one side and one angle. So today, it says, we'll combine the last couple of topics in order to solve word problems and triangles using three tools of trigonometry. Each of the following tools requires that you know different things about a triangle you're trying to solve. The first one is the Pythagorean theorem. We call that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Will I give this to you on your formula sheet for this test? Yes. If you're having to look it up, though, that's my indication that probably you haven't done the homework. With this tool, you're using it to find a missing side. Because you'll notice there's no angle in here. What was the variable, David, do you remember I like to use for finding an angle, that Greek letter? Do you remember it? Theta. Okay, no theta in here means you're finding a side. Uh, you must have two sides in order to use this. If you have the hypotenuse, Zach, make sure you put the hypotenuse here. It always goes where the C is. That was the only thing you had to remember. And then how do you get rid of a squared square root? The second tool we gave you was the primary trig ratios. And we had a handy dandy acronym for that. It was so ka toa.
With this tool, you're using it to find a side or an angle. And you must have, Adrian, I'm going to use some abbreviations from the geometry unit. You must have two sides. Can I write that as SS? Remember our congruency rules? Or, what do you think SA stands for? One side and what, Emma? One angle. Uh, and the 90 degree one. You need that one too because it does say at the very top here, solving right angle triangles. If they don't give you that, all the rules are off. Okay. And then the third one is a lovely review from last unit. This is why we do geometry before we do trig if we can. The angle sum of a triangle. Rob, what was the angle sum of a triangle? Every triangle's angles added to what? We use this to find, can I abbreviate angles with an angle symbol and an apostrophe S? You need two angles, and then you can go 180 minus the two to find the third one. Okay. We do have an important note, Nicole. The first two tools, Pythagoras and Sokotoa, can only be used when you have a right angled triangle. And we are in uh, one, two, two or three lessons, Nikki, going to start to look at non-right angle triangle. And that's where the new stuff begins. We're going to learn something called the sine law and the cosine law. Also useful, especially in physics, um, but a little bit trickier. Okay. Example one. Alicia, it says, Alyssa, it says, good gosh, I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with your name. It's because I'm stupid. The mind goes first and then, the, you know, the hair is next, right? Um, for each of the following, find all the missing sides and angles. What I'm going to say on your test is completely solve this triangle. It means, Rachel, find anything that's missing. Okay? What's the first thing, Rachel, it wants us to find? Do we have enough information here to find angle M? Yeah. Zach, how big is this angle right here? 90, that's a little symbol, right? How big is that? Can you in your head find how big angle M has to be? Or use a calculator. And we're using angle sum of triangles, right? By the way, Zach, you want the shortcut? Since this is 90, it's really these two add to 90, because 180 minus 90 is 90, so it's 90 minus 62. Uh, 28, am I right? Check. Colleen, what's the next thing it wants me to find? MD, which is uh, that one. Right? Here's the angle that they gave me. Opposite adjacent or hypotenuse, this 15. Opposite adjacent or hypotenuse, this x. Hypotenuse. Which trig function is oh? I agree with you, Joel. And Joel, what always goes next to the trig function? The angle. What is the angle this time? 62. And sine is what over what? Well, the so in Sokotoa stood for opposite over hypotenuse. Joel, in this triangle, specifically what over what? Nice. Good. Solve for x. I'll do it up here. Let's see if we get the same thing. Come on, eraser.
I better make sure that I'm in degrees. I am. So you get 16.99. Did it say what to round off to in the question? No, then I'll go to two decimal places. That's my fallback. So I'll go 16.99. Okay. Did you try the sine of 30 earlier in class? I got 16.99. Nikki, what's the next thing they want me to find? Ud. Now you have a choice. Since I know this is 16.99, now I know two sides, and I could use Pythagoras. Go ahead. Uh, I'm going to use trig, and the reason is... I don't want to use this one unless I have to, because if I made a mistake on this, I'll be using a mistake to find another answer. Will I get the other answer right? No. So I'm going to choose to use trig again. You ready? Here's my angle. Here's what they're asking me to find. I'll put a Y there since I used an X already. Nikki, opposite adjacent to hypotenuse. Adjacent to hypotenuse. Which trig function uses those two? What always goes right next to the trig function? Equals what over what, kiddo? Yep. Good, let's solve for y. Seven point nine eight. Yeah. Okay. Make sure you're practicing on your calculator. Yeah. So Joel, let's suppose I finish the test, and I had a question like this. Here's how I can check my answer. Pythagoras should also work. I should also be able to go fifteen squared plus this side, 7.98 squared equals, and when I square root that number, do I get 16.99? Yay! I got another way to check. I'm right. So the first kind of question that you're going to get in the homework tanner mm -hmm. is one angle and one side. Sa. Second kind of question you're going to get is two sides. Okay. Rob, what's the first thing it wants me to find? No, what's the first thing it wants me to find? Angle D. Hmm. Can I find angle D right now using angle sum of triangles? No, because I don't know that one either. Okay. Now we're going to have to use trig, Sokotoa, to find angle D. Kayla, this 12, opposite adjacent or hypotenuse. I totally agree. How about the 13? I totally agree. Which trig function is, oh. Sin is when you swear in my class or when you're late and don't do the homework. Sign. And Kayla, what always goes next to the trig function? And what's the angle this time? You know what, instead of an x, how about I put a d? Because that will help me keep things organized. Equals what over what? OK. Am I going to cross multiply here? What am I going to do then? Ah, uh, yeah. This is where we went. And again, those of you with your calculators better practice. Second function sine, bracket, 12 divided by 13, close bracket. When I hit equals or enter, this should tell me the angle that it came from. What angle did it come from? I'll go 
And you know what? I'll go 67.38. I'll go to two decimal places and be uber accurate. 67.38 degrees. Cole, you get that okay? You lying? Did you try it? You got a new calculator, better practice. Just saying. Adrian, what we get here? It's a little hard to understand what you're saying. Is it fully or fully? And how big is this angle? You have to know this. How big is this angle? Yeah, it is. You know how I know? Because they put that little symbol right there. Look down at your piece of paper in front of you. Okay? There's a reason why I photocopy this. It's so you can actually see it in front of you. So ready? How big? How big angle D? Okay, how big is angle O? How can we find it? I don't know. How do we find it? Just wrote a test on it, kiddo. Sam, how do I find it? Oh, angle sum of triangles, 180 minus? So you're saying 180 minus 90, mi whoop, not times, minus 67.38. How big is angle O? 22.62. I'd be fine with that on a quiz or a test. Because they didn't tell me how accurate to go, I'm being uber accurate, just in case I use this to find other stuff too. Just so we know what we did, how about Nikki in our notes we write angle O equals 180 minus 90 minus 67.38 so that when you're studying later on you know what the heck we did. Tatiana, what's the last thing it wants me to find? Okay, let's put our X right there. Now, we can use Sokotoa, or we can use Pythagoras. I'm going to choose to use Pythagoras because, Nikki, if I use Sokotoa, I have to use this angle or this angle. And I might have got one of these wrong. I know the 12 and the 13 are right because, Joel, they gave me those in the diagram. Right? Do you always just twitch your eyebrows at a blank door? That's your move, is it? Ladies, be afraid. So, Joel, I'm going to choose to use Pythagoras. I'm going to write here a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Am I trying to find the hypotenuse, or did I know, the, or do I know the hypotenuse? Oh, what is the hypotenuse? And that always goes where the C is, right? And I said A and B doesn't matter what order you put them in. I like the X to show up first. I'm going to go X squared plus 12 squared. Alexis, how will I move this 12 squared over? Subtract. Now, by the way, it's not going to be 13 take away 12 is 1. It's 13 squared take away 12 squared. I'm going to go minus 12 squared from both sides. And on your calculator, what is 13 squared take away 12 squared? I think 25, if I'm doing the math right in my head. Yep. Jacob, how to get rid of a squared? What is the square root of 25 in your head, Jacob? Five. Five. Rob, is he alive? He is. Okay. Tanner, you're pretty good. In my prime in university, Tanner, I could actually go like this so my prof couldn't see my eyes, and I could move my pen in my sleep so it looked like I was taking notes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not as hard as you think. Of course, the other option is just bring some caffeine and sleep when you... Ah! Nothing. Got Colleen a little bit there. Turn the page. Cole, this is the last question. I told you it would be a short lesson. I haven't forgotten. 
Word problem. Okay. No problem. Hey, by the way, what shape is going to appear in this word problem somewhere, Rachel? What do you think? It's going to be a triangle, okay? And if they mention a cliff, let's assume cliffs are vertical. We'll think. Read to me, Rachel. Stop. There's my cliff. Here's the person. Does that make sense so far, Kiara? This is how I put these together. Oh, was there a number attached to the cliff? Hey, let's put that right here. Keep reading, Rachel. Fires. Okay, so apparently there's a ship out here somewhere. There's my ship. Looks like an umbrella. Shut up. Um, oh, oh, where would this 800 go? On the slanty part or on the bottom part? If it says 800 meters offshore, where do you think would make more sense? Bottom. 800. Oh, and we said we'll assume cliffs are vertical, so we know we, we'll assume it's a 90 degree angle right there. Yes? Keep reading. Find. Except here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to read it like this. Find the angle of depression of the cannon. Go ahead. I know you want to. Come on. Find the angle of depression. Okay. And why am I doing that? Because here's the angle they're talking about, Rachel. They want me to find that angle, theta. Right? Now, how do I remember that? Angle of depression. Oh, yeah. This one from my eyes down. Right? Here's the problem. That angle's not in the triangle. Ah, did anybody see it? What? Alternate interior. There's a Z. So I can find that angle by finding that one. Okay. Joel, opposite adjacent or hypotenuse based on that angle there. I totally agree. How about this? I totally agree. Did you all turn the page or are you on the same page? Okay, I've turned the page, so I have to write so, ka, to, hey, which trig function, Joel? Tanner, what always goes next to the trig function? Uh, what's the angle this time? Theta. Thank you for remembering the Greek word. I knew I could count on you. Tanner equals what over what? Good. Find the angle. Oh, how do I find an angle? Am I cross-multiplying here? I say no, no. In fact, it's going to be all calculator. This is why I've been yelling at you to bring the same calculator over and over. And you need to know how your calculator works. I cannot help you figure it out on a quiz or a test, folks. Adrian, what would you get for your angle? Since I saw you finally start to type. 9.2298. Is that right? Yep. Let's go 9.23 degrees. Which means, by the way, my scale here is terrible, but I don't care. Tanner, a, a 9 degree angle would really look about like that. Like, almost like nothing at all, barely at all, whatever. Rachel, keep reading after the word then, comma. Then what? Which of these lines do you think would represent the distance that the cannonball traveled? Well, let's be clever. They gave me that. They gave me that. I doubt they're asking me to tell them that. You know what? I'm pretty sure the X is going to go right there. Am I going to use Sokotoa here or Pythagoras to find the missing side? I'm going to use Pythagoras. I could use Sokotoa, assuming I've got this 9.23 right, but why risk it? I would use it to check my answer later on, Tanner, before I handed the quiz in, and if I got the same answer both ways, then I know I'm right. That's a nice feeling. Uh, Pythagoras says, okay, cool. This X, is it the hypotenuse or not? Yeah. Oh, so it's going to go by itself. 
and it's going to be 130 squared plus 800 squared. You'll notice I'm not writing a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We're going straight to plug in the numbers. If you feel comfortable doing that, go ahead. Is the x squared by itself already, Joel? Then can you go to your calculator, 130 squared plus 800 squared? And then when you're done that and press equals, how to get rid of a squared? Yes, I hear the phone vibrating, whoever that is, but it's on vibrate. It's not Timbits, although you could turn it off and be out of contact with the world for 35 minutes. Kayla, what'd you get? 800. By the way, look up. There is a built-in error check. What's the longest side you know? 800? This side here, longer or shorter than 800? It's got to be. In other words, if you get an answer less than 800, you probably subtracted or put the X in the wrong plate. Like, let's clue in and look at our diagrams and say, well, that can't be right. Or can you get a negative answer? If you get a negative, you've screwed up. So one of the things I like about trig, there is Chelsea, a bunch of built-in error checks. Sorry, what'd you get? 810, anybody else? Yeah? 810 meters. What's your homework? It's nice out, by the way, so hopefully you won't have any. You're going to get lots of time. First of all, if you haven't completed lesson one or two or three, those get those done and caught up today. This is it. By the way, Wednesday, what do you guys have? So this, if you play this right, means no homework for the Pro D Day, right? Uh, number one, I encourage you in number one to get as fast as you can and if you need to show, if you can get away with showing less work, go ahead. Now, Joel, that means you can just copy the answers from the back. I'm going to assume you're not that careless, right? Number two. Number three, skiing. Number four. And, oh, why don't you just say all of it, Mr. Duick? Because. Okay. I think you can expect a take-home quiz on Sokotoa either on Friday or on Monday of next week. Okay. Then we move into the newer stuff. Right-click. Right-click. 